Okay, now we move on to IELTS listening part two. And we have multiple choice questions, a very good opportunity to understand what multiple choice questions are and how to deal with them, okay? Uh, because when they appear in part two, they're not very difficult. In part three, yes, they are a bit difficult because of the nature of the audio. IELTS listening part one is a dialogue. IELTS listening part two is a monologue. One person is talking, audio commentary. IELTS listening part three is a tutorial where there can be minimum two speakers, maximum three speakers. And IELTS listening part four is a lecture where one tutor or lecturer or presenter is going to deliver the lecture. So, question number 11. Stevenson's was found. Now, Stevenson is, a, is, is an organization or a company or anything we don't know. But from the word found, right? Stevenson was founded, like founded. When we talk about founded, it means an organization or a company or factory. Now, Stevenson was founded in, there are three dates, 1923, 1924, 1926. So founded means laid the foundation of, or the company was established. Now, what will be a trap? They will say in 1923, they started planning about Stevenson's. And then in 1924, they finalized the plans and it took them two years to practically lay the foundation of the company in 1926. What will be the answer? 1926. Right? They will not leave other options. They will say, well, Stevenson was founded back in 1923 and in 1924 they got success in their business and in 1926 it became the biggest company of the country. What is the answer? 1923. They will talk about all three options. They want to check your ability whether you understand English or whether, uh-huh, all right, A, 1923, 1923, A, good. I, I, let's no problem. Okay, so please now listen and answer. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Stevenson's, one of the country's major manufacturers of metal goods. Thank you for choosing us for your two weeks of work experience. My name is Julia Simmons, and since the beginning of this year, I've been the managing director. Stevenson's is quite an old company. Like me, the founder, Ronald Stevenson, went into the steel industry when he left school. That was in 1923. He set up this company when he finished his apprenticeship in 1926, although he actually started making plans two years earlier in 1924. He was a very determined young man. Okay, so what will be the right answer? Exactly. One thing I tell you, if you write 1926 or 1924, your answer is absolutely wrong. This is a very common mistake the students do. Instead of writing A, B, C, they write the word over there and the answer is absolutely wrong. So correct answer is option C. Okay, whatever the option is, right answer is option C. Exactly. If you write C and then you write 1926, even then your answer is wrong. Whenever they label anything A, B, C, you must use the label only. And see, he started planning, he finished his education in 1923, uh, 23, then he started planning in 1924, and then finally 1926. And they can rearrange these options as well. Now, question number 12. Originally, Stevenson's manufactured goods for, now listen, when we say originally, it means when they started. For example, there are several companies when they started their business. If I say, originally I started my career as an English language teacher. Now I teach IELTS. So originally means in the beginning, whatever they did or originally what they started off as a. So originally Stevens, for example, Amazon, originally they started as a bookshop. Amazon was a bookshop and now they've got everything, right? So originally Stevenson's manufactured goods for Option A, healthcare industry. What is healthcare industry? Clinics, hospitals, right? And all that. Option B, automotive industry. What is that? Cars, lorries, buses, trucks. That is automotive industry. And machine tool industry. So originally, I mean, if they say we started off as a company and we provided goods to hospitals, clinics, and all that. That is option A. 
If they say in the first two years of our career, we provided machine tools to different industries and then we switched to healthcare industry. So originally, what is their option? C. So you need to see when they started their company, what did they start with? Stevenson's long-term plan was to manufacture components for the machine tools industry, although in fact that never came about, and for the automotive industry, that is cars and lorries. However, there was a delay of five years before that happened, because shortly before the company went into production, Stevenson was given the opportunity to make goods for hospitals and other players in the healthcare industry. Okay, machine tools that never came about. Automotive, that is after five years. So initially they were given an opportunity. So the right answer is option A. Well done. That's good. Now, question number 13. What does the speaker say about the company premises? Premises is the area. For example, if I say the premises of Royal Palm. This is the premises or these are the premises of Royal Palm. What does the speaker say about company premises? Now, the subject of talk is company premises, right? Option A, recently moved. Now, if they have moved recently from one area to this place, option A is the right answer. Option B, no plans to move means they will not shift. If they say the area is large enough and we don't have any plan to move, or if they say we are looking for, uh, for uh, we are looking to shift to a new location, then it's not the right answer. And going to move shortly. If they say in a couple of months we are going to shift to a new location, what does it mean? Going to move shortly. Now listen, company premises. Option A: recently moved. Option B: no plans to move. And option C, going to move shortly. Over the years, we've expanded the premises considerably. We were lucky that the site is big enough, so moving to a new location has never been necessary. However, the layout is far from ideal for modern machinery and production methods, so we intend to carry out major refurbishment of this site over the next five years. Okay, so the correct answer is option B. Well done. No plans to move. That's great. Uh, well, it's not C, Amina. It's not C. Correct answer is B. Just focus this part. Over the years, we've expanded the premises considerably. We were lucky that the site is big enough, so moving to a new location has never been necessary. Moving to a new location has never been necessary. What does it mean? No plans to move. Okay. Now, let's move on. Question number 14. And the program for the work experience group includes, they have a program and this program is for work experience group. Now, what is it that the program include? I mean, what is excluded? That will not be your answer. What is included? That is your answer. Time to do research. Meeting with a teacher. Talks by staff. So what is included? For example, if they say, during this program, you will not have any time to do research. You can do that later on. Will A be the right answer? No. If they say, well, we wanted to introduce you to a teacher, but I'm afraid that will not be possible because the teacher is busy. So this time you will go on without a teacher. Will be, be the answer? No. And talks by staff. For staff, they can use the word manager. If they say in the audio, well, in the work experience group, this time you will be introduced to our manager and he will give a presentation. Will that be the answer? Yes, talks by staff. Talks is presentation, staff is manager. Okay, now let's see what do they say in the audio. I'd better give you some idea of what you'll be doing during your two weeks with us so you know what to expect. Most mornings you'll have a presentation from one of the managers to learn about their department, starting this morning with research and development. And you'll all spend some time in each department, observing what's going on and talking to people. 
as long as you don't stop them from doing their work altogether. In the past, a teacher from your school has come in at the end of each week to find out how the group were getting on, but your school isn't able to arrange that this year. See that? Teacher used to come, but your school isn't able to arrange that. Teacher is not coming, right? So correct answer is option C, okay? Dr. Chanika, it's not A. I tell you why A is wrong. I mean, they use the word research, right? They use the word research, but that came in talks by staff. Staff will deliver a talk and he will tell you about the research, okay? Please listen again. I'd better give you some idea of what you'll be doing during your two weeks with us so you know what to expect. Most mornings you'll have a presentation from one of the managers. Most morning you will have a presentation with one of the managers, that is talks by staff. To learn about their department, starting this morning with research and development. Starting this morning with research and development. Now research and development is the topic of the presentation. Okay, they will, they're not saying time to do research. No, research and development is the topic of that talk. Okay, so like this, you can actually deal with multiple choice questions. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we are going to start with multiple choice questions and a good opportunity to learn about multiple choice questions. I would like to give you a little bhashan about multiple choice questions. Remember, in multiple choice questions, they always check your ability to identify the right option from wrong options. There are three options. They discuss all three options in any order. They discuss two options negatively, oppositely, but one option is discussed as it is, and that is the right answer. For example, now let's just start and I'll give you more tips with that, okay? Uh, boat trip round Tasmania. Now forget about Tasmania, it's a place. All you need to imagine is a boat trip, right? Did you ever have a ride in the boat? Yeah, in any stream or anywhere in Lahore, we've got some boat riding, okay? So boat trip, like there is a boat and you're going to take a trip on boat and all that. Now, if you imagine boat trip, you can understand many things. Question number 11. What is the maximum number of people who can stand on each side of the boat? This is the boat. For example, this is the boat. Now, maximum number of people who can stand on each side of the boat. Right? Answer is not maximum number of people who can sit in the boat. Answer is maximum number of people who can stand on each side of the boat. This is one side. And this is other side. So maximum number of people who can stand. 9, 15, 18. Okay. Now if he says like uh, 15 people can stand on either side. And there will be 30 people on board. Something like that. Okay. Now you just focus on one thing. That the number of people who can stand on one side of the board. Maximum number. Okay. Let's see. You will hear a tour guide, Lou Miller speaking to a group of people about a boat trip they are going to take around the Australian island of Tasmania. So, hello everyone. My name's Lou Miller, and I'm going to be your tour guide today as we take this fantastic boat trip around the Tasmanian coast. Before we set off, I just want to tell you a few things about our journey. Our boats aren't huge, as you can see. We already have all right, I play it again. 
you will hear a tour guide, Lou Miller, speaking to a group of people about a boat trip they are going to take around the Australian island of Tasmania. So, hello everyone. My name's Lou Miller, and I'm going to be your tour guide today as we take this fantastic boat trip around the Tasmanian coast. Before we set off, I just want to tell you a few things about our journey. Our boats aren't huge, as you can see. We already have three staff members on board, and on top of that, we can transport a further 15 people, that's you, around the coastline. But please note, if there are more than nine people on either side of the boat, we'll move some of you over. <laughs> Otherwise, all 18 of us will end up in the sea. Okay, so the right answer is A, B or C. A, right? Total 15 passengers, three staff members. And he said if there are more than nine people on either side of the boat, we'll move some of you over. Otherwise, all 18 of us will end up in the sea. What does it mean? We will drown in the sea. Okay, so correct answer is not 9. Stephen, that's not the right answer. Sita and Anam, that's not the right answer. Correct answer is A. This is a very common mistake students do. Instead of writing A, they write the word. So if you write that word, your answer is absolutely wrong. So you have to be very careful. Correct answer is A. And please use capital letter because they have capital letters here. Now, question number 12. What color are the tour boats? Okay, now if I say what color is your car? Will you take a look at the car from outside or inside? Outside. outside. Okay, so it's simple. The color of the boat from outside. If they say we have beautiful red interior, is that the answer? Yes. No. Because that is inside. And if they say, our boats used to be white. Used to be white. What does it mean? Past tense. And the question is, what color are? R means present tense. Okay? So if they say, our, we, we, will paint our color, uh, we will paint our boats red in the future. Will that be the answer? No. Future is not the answer. Past is not the answer. Interior color is not the answer. And this is how they are going to play with you. Dark red option A, jet black, light green. They will use all these colors. Some colors will, will be associated with the past, some with the future, some will be interior colors. But your answer is present exterior color, right? Let's see. We've recently upgraded all our boats. They used to be jet black, but our new ones now have these comfortable dark red seats and a light green exterior in order to stand out from okay. others. Okay, dark red seats and light green exterior. Well done. Stephen, wake up, huh? Light green, that is option C. Okay, I told you exterior will be the right answer. Yes, exactly. Otherwise, all good, okay? Uh, I'm recording the class. You must attend this class recording because second time you understand things better. Question number 13. Which lunchbox is suitable for someone who doesn't eat meat or fish? Underline, doesn't eat meat or fish. And what do we call that person who doesn't eat, eat meat or fish? Vegetarian. Okay. Now, out of three lunchboxes, there is one lunchbox that does not contain any type of fish, meat. And you know, for meat, they will not use the word meat. They may use the word meat, mutton beef, pork, as they talk about these meats, okay? So you need to listen carefully and see one lunchbox will not contain any sort of meat. And for fish, they may talk about kind of fish. For example, if they say lunchbox one will contain whale, whale is fish. Lunchbox two contains shark, shark is fish. Okay, now don't go for the word fish. They may use the breed of certain fish, right? Now one lunchbox, that does not contain. And one more thing. If they say lunchbox A, for example, lunchbox 1 contains vegetables and veal. Vegetables and veal. Now, vegetables, you say vegetables, yes, no meat. But then they say veal. Veal is meat. Again, fish. Okay? So listen carefully and then decide. We offer you a free lunchbox during the trip. And we have three types. Lunchbox 1 contains ham and tomato sandwiches. 
Lunchbox 2 contains a cheddar cheese roll. And Lunchbox 3 is salad-based and also contains eggs and tuna. All three Lunchboxes also have a packet of crisps and chocolate bar inside. Okay, see that? So confusing. They discussed all three lunch boxes, but the correct answer is option B. And I'm going to play it again, right? Please listen why other options are wrong. We offer you a free lunch box during the trip, and we have three types. Lunch box one contains ham and tomatoes. Ham and tomatoes. Now, those who don't understand ham, they say tomatoes. Oh, that's good. Ham is pig's meat. Right? So that is what they call ham. And ham is meat. So A is not the right answer. Sandwiches. Lunchbox 2 contains a cheddar cheese roll. Lunchbox 2 contains a cheddar cheese roll. Now cheese is not meat. And they didn't talk about any fish or anything like that. Lunchbox 2 contains cheddar cheese roll. So that is option B. And Lunchbox 3 is salad based. Lunchbox 3 is salad based. Is it salad based? Doesn't eat meat or fish? Yes. No. Now what do they say after that? Also contains eggs and tuna. Eggs and tuna. What is tuna? Fish. Absolutely. So B is the right answer. Now let's go on. Question number 14. What should people do with their litter? By the way, in part 1, if you had the wrong spelling of litter, you can check it here. L-I-T-T-E-R. So sometimes you can have things like that. What should people do with their litter? Now imagine you are on a boat and you eat a chocolate and there is a wrapper of the chocolate. What will you do with the wrapper? Throw it in the sea? No. <laughs> That's not good, okay? Don't throw it in the sea. Put it in your pocket. Put it in a plastic bag. So there are three options. Take it home. Like the wrapper or garbage or litter. Put it somewhere and take it home. Option B. Hand it to a member of staff. Like the staff members will have a sort of plastic bag and give it to them and they will actually dispose it off. Put it in the bins provided on the boat. If there are dust bins on the boat, and you can put your trash or you can put your litter in the dustbins. Now option A, take it home. Option B, give it to a member of staff. And option C, put it in the dustbin. Okay. Now they will play with all three, three options. Two options they will deny. For example, as you can see, there are no dustbins on our boat. C is gone. Okay. So our crew members will be very busy to take trash from you. That's why we advise you to take it home and throw it in your home dustbin. Option A. Okay, so listen carefully. Then you will find the answer. I'm sure I don't have to ask you not to throw anything into the sea. We don't have any bins to put litter in, but Jess, myself or Ray, our other guide, will collect it from you after lunch and put it all in a large plastic sack. Okay, we will collect it from you, Ray or other guy. We will collect, we mean staff members and put it in a large sack. So hand it to a member of staff. B will be the right answer. All good? So this is multiple choice questions. You need to identify wrong options and you have to actually eliminate the wrong options. So this time we have double multiple choice questions. You may ask me, sir, we don't understand single multiple choice questions and you are teaching us double multiple questions on a December morning when the weather is awesome outside and you are teaching us IELTS, huh? how bad it is. Anyways, double multiple choice questions. There are five options. Out of five options, two options are correct. Three options are incorrect. So you need to identify those incorrect options. And once you identify incorrect option, it's a good idea to cross it. If you're doing paper delivered aisles, when you cross it, a little cross, 
I mean, if out of five, you crossed one option, now you are left with four. Success rate 50-50. Or if you cross two options out of five, now three are left and out of three, two are right answers. So instead of looking for the right answer, look for the wrong answer and eliminate that. I mean, a little cross. Don't cross it all together, just a little cross over there. Now, which two features of lighthouse? Now, do you know what the lighthouse is? In the past, on the beach, they used to have a tower and that tower used to have a light and that light was for the ships. When they were coming to the beach, so there was that light in the old times. Now we have the best navigation systems and all that. In the past, when there were no navigation systems, so they used to have the lighthouses. Now, two features of lighthouse does Lou mention. Lou is the guy in the audio. He will mention two features of the lighthouse. And by the way, they have given five features. It means out of five, two features he will discuss in the same way and three features he is going to change. For example, why it was built. If in the audio he says, even today, nobody knows why this lighthouse was built. Will it be the answer? No. And if he says, this lighthouse was built to protect the ships. What, what is that? That is the reason. So if he tells the reason, A is the right answer. If he doesn't tell the reason, A is not the right answer. B, who built it? If he says it was built by King Alexander, B is the right answer. And if he says, even today, nobody knows who built this lighthouse. It's not the right answer. C, how long it took to build duration? If he says it took three years to construct this lighthouse, C is the right answer. And if he doesn't talk about it, then it is not. Option D, who staffed it? Staff mean people who work in the lighthouse. If they say the people who work in the lighthouse, they are slaves, all right? Or the people who work in the lighthouse, they are IELTS candidates, for example, okay? So we understand who staffed it. Who staffed it means, it means lighthouse. So people who work in the lighthouse. What it was built with? If he says this lighthouse was built with stone, all right, all clear? If he says this lighthouse was built with concrete, so we understand what it was built with. Now, confusing thing is they will discuss all five options in any order. If they discuss A, B, C, D, E, life will be easier. Tick or cross, tick or cross. But they will discuss all options one by one. So let's see. Don't worry, we'll do it all together. The engine on the boat makes quite a lot of noise. So before we head off, let me tell you a few things about what you're going to see. This area is famous for its ancient lighthouse, which you'll see from the boat as we turn past the first little island. It was built in 1838 to protect sailors, as a number of shipwrecks had led to significant loss of life. The construction itself was complicated, as some of the original drawings kept by the local council show. It sits right on top of the cliffs in a very isolated spot. In the 19th century, there were many jobs there, such as polishing the brass lamps, chopping firewood and cleaning windows that kept lighthouse keepers busy. These workers were mainly prison convicts until the middle of that century, when ordinary families willing to live in such circumstances took over. OK, these workers were prison convict. Prison convicts, like, you know, prisoners who were sentenced five years, ten years, and these workers were they. So that is option D, who staffed it. Option D, who staffed it. Okay, so first correct answer is option D, who staffed it. And what about the second correct answer? It was built to protect the sailors. Option a, well done. So correct answer is option A and option D. Uh, now, if you're taking paper delivered IELTS, for question number 15, you will write A. And for question number 16, you will write D. I'm playing it again. The engine on the boat makes quite a lot of noise. So before we head off, let me tell you a few things about what you're going to see. This area is famous for its ancient lighthouse, which you'll see from the boat as we turn past the first little island. 
It was built in 1838 to protect sailors. It was built in 1838 to protect sailors. Now option C, how long it took to build? He did not say anything about the time period. He said it was built in 1838 to protect the sailors. So protecting the sailors is why it was built. A is the first right answer. As a number of shipwrecks had led to significant loss of life. The construction itself was complicated as some of the original construction was complicated but he didn't talk about material no drawings kept by the local council show it sits right on top of the cliffs in a very isolated spot in the 19th century there were many jobs there such as polishing the brass lamps chopping firewood and cleaning windows that kept lighthouse keepers busy These workers were mainly prison convicts. These workers were mainly prison convict. Who staffed it? These workers were mainly prison convict. Like they were prisoners and they took them to the lighthouse and said you work here, right? Okay. Now, let's go on. Question 17 and 18. Again, double multiple choice. Choose two letters. Which two types of creature might come close to the boat very simple question they have they will talk about five creatures option a sea eagles b fur seals dolphins whales penguins now listen two type of creatures will come closer to the boat that will be the right answer and what you will see at the distance for example sea eagles they say well you will see sea eagles at the distance flying in the sky will it be the answer No, if they say the sea eagles will come down and you can even feed them, so then it is the right answer. Option B, fur seals. If they say fur seals are very friendly as we move on, they will go round our boat. So they will come closer. And option C, dolphins. If they say, well, it is very difficult to see dolphins, maybe you can spot one or two at the distance, at the distance. I mean, whatever animal will come closer, to the boat will be the right answer the animal you will not see or the animal you will see at the distance will be the wrong answer okay now please listen and answer 17 and 18 some of you have asked me what creatures we can expect to see i know everyone loves the penguins but they're very shy and unfortunately tend to hide from passing boats but you might see birds in the distance such as sea eagles flying around the cliff edges where they nest when we get to the rocky area inhabited by fur seals we'll stop and watch them swimming around the coast they're inquisitive creatures so don't be surprised if one pops up right in front of you their predators orca whales hunt along the coastline too but spotting one of these is rare dolphins on the other hand can sometimes approach on their own or in groups as they ride the waves beside us okay so out of five dolphins they come in a group as they ride beside us so one correct answer is dolphins that is option c and second correct answer is option b for seals and you can write these answers in any order for example 17 b 18 c or you may write 17 c 18 b that is even correct okay so now listen please follow me again some of you have asked me what creatures we can expect to see i know everyone loves the penguins but they're very shy everyone loves the penguins but they are very shy shy means they will not come closer penguins are very shy and unfortunately tend to hide from unfortunately tend to hide so when they hide you cannot see them they will not come closer passing boats but you might see birds in the distance you might see birds in the distance now when penguins you have crossed birds you have crossed bird is that sea eagles now you are left with three options and two are right okay so elimination is the best technique but you might see birds in the distance such as sea eagles flying around the cliff edges where they nest 
When we get to the rocky area inhabited by fur seals, we'll stop and watch them swimming around the coast. Okay, watch them swimming, swimming around the coast. Now listen. They're inquisitive creatures, so don't be surprised if one pops up right in front of you. Don't be surprised if one. One means that fur seal. If one pops up right in front of you. What does it mean? Creatures might come close to the boat. Fur seals. <coughs> They're inquisitive creatures, so don't be surprised if one pops up right in front of you. Their predators, orca whales, hunt along the coastline too, but spotting one of these is rare. Whales hunt along, but spotting one of these is rare. Whales, spotting one of these is rare, means you will not see the whales. Dolphins, on the other hand, can sometimes approach on their own or in groups as they ride the waves beside us. Beside us. They ride the waves beside us. Means dolphins will come closer. And then the second is fur seals. Okay, let's go on. Now we've got questions 19 and 20. Which two points does Lou make about the caves? Subject of this multiple choice question is caves. And two points. So there are caves and he's going to make two points. Large tourist boats can visit them. Underline large boats visit. What does it mean? Small boats cannot go there. So if in the audio he says uh, you can approach the caves by large boats only. Then A is the right answer. But if he says you can go to the caves on small boats. Or there is a type of boat we call it kayak. Kayak is a small boat. It's, uh, it's rowed by one person. You might have seen small boat, one person, and he's having this. We call it kayaking or kayak. So that is a small boat. If he says you can go there by kayak, it means it's a small boat. You can go there. So it's not that large boats can go there. Option B, entrances to them are often closed. Them. What do they mean by them? Caves. So entrances to caves are blocked. If they are blocked, this is the right answer. And if they are mostly open, then it is not the right answer. Option C, too dangerous for individuals to go near them. Underline dangerous and individuals. So if they say they are very dangerous, don't try to go there on your own. Then it is C. Someone will explain what is inside them. If he says our tourist guide will tell you what is inside the caves, then it is option D, right? And option E, they cannot be reached on foot. If he says you cannot go to the caves on foot or you cannot walk to the caves, then it is option E. But if he says sometimes when the tide is low, you can walk to the caves. So if you can walk, then E is not the right answer. Okay. All right. Now let's see. Lastly, I want to mention the caves. Tasmania is famous for its caves, and the ones we'll pass by are so amazing that people are lost for words when they see them. They can only be approached by sea, but if you feel that you want to see more than we're able to show you, then you can take a kayak into the area on another day, and one of our staff will give you more information on that. What we'll do is to go through a narrow channel, past some incredible rock formations, and from there we'll be able to see the openings to the caves, and at that point we'll talk to you about what lies beyond. Okay, we will talk to you about what lies beyond. We will talk to you means we will tell you what lies beyond. Beyond means inside the cave. So correct answer is option D and option E. Well done, Janika, that's good. Option D and option E. Option D is someone will explain and he said we will tell you what lies beyond. Option E, they cannot be reached on foot. Now I'm playing it again, please listen. Lastly, I want to mention the caves. Tasmania is famous for its caves and the ones we'll pass by are so amazing that people are lost for words when they see them. They can only be approached by sea. They can only be approached by sea. What does it mean? Option E. They cannot be reached on foot. Try to understand what they are saying. They can only be approached by sea. So if I say they, they means caves. 
caves can only be approached by C. It means you cannot walk to the caves. So option E is the right answer. The first correct answer. But if you feel that you want to see more than we're able to show you, then you can take a kayak into the area on another day. You can take a kayak into the area. Option A, only large tourist boats can visit them. He says you can only take kayak. Now, for you, it is important to know what kayak is. If you don't know what kayak is, you say, I don't know. So you'll not find it. Kayak, you can check it on Google. Just write kayak. K-A-V-A-K, -K, something like that. Okay, kayak. And one of our staff will give you more information on that. What we'll do is to go through a narrow channel, past some incredible rock formations, and from there we'll be able to see the openings to the caves. We will be able to see the openings to the caves. Now, B option. Entrances to them are often blocked. Let's see if he talks about blockage or not. And at that point, we'll talk to you about what lies beyond. He didn't talk about any blockage. And he said, at that point, we will talk to you what lies beyond. What lies beyond means someone will explain what is inside them. Inside them, what lies beyond. Like we will take you to the openings of the caves and we will talk to you about what lies beyond. Beyond means inside the caves. So D is the right answer. Sometimes part two can be very tricky as well. This is just part two. Okay, now we are going to see how to deal with double multiple choice questions. In IELTS listening, part 3 and part 3 is what I call elephant of IELTS listening. And we have double multiple choice questions out of 5 options. 3 options are wrong. If you identify 3 wrong options, you will never have problem with multiple choice questions. What do we do? We are looking for right answer. Right? And when we are looking for right answer, we fall prey to the wrong answers. So you should know logically what are the wrong options. Once you eliminate the wrong options, multiple choice will not be a problem for you. Okay, questions 21 and 22, choose two letters A to E. Which two parts of introductory stage to their art project? Underline art project, two parts. Do Jess and Tom agree were useful? Underline J, uh, agree and useful. Now, out of five, two things they agree were useful. And three things were useless. Or three things, one says useful, second says useless. You have to see their agreement on two things which were useful. So, where they, there is no agreement, that is not the right answer. Where the things were useless, even that is not the right answer. So right answer is two useful things, part of their project. Let's see. Bird park visit. Uh, bird park visit. Now, you know, there is a park where they have bird birds, right? There is a net. Like in Lahore also, we've got that bird park in Jallo. I don't know what to call it. What do we call it? Safari park. So in Safari Park, there is a bird park visit. Now, if bird, for example, Tom and Jess. Jess says, well, the bird park visit was very useful. And Tom says, well, I couldn't make it. I didn't go there. Will it be the answer? No, because useful and they agree. Second, workshop session. If one says, I found the workshop sessions very interesting and they really added to my knowledge. And the second one says, I knew about all these things already, so it was a waste of time. Is it the answer? No, where they agree. Option C, natural history museum visit. If one says the natural history museum visit was quite stunning, I learned a lot of things. And second one says, me too. Then this can be the right answer. Option E, handouts with research sources. So if handouts useful and they agree, so out of five, two things useful and they agree will be the right answer. And they will discuss all five options in any order. 
Don't expect A. First, you need to see if they use the word museum. Jump to option C. Listen and decide. Tick or cross? Tick means this is the right answer. Cross means this is just a trap. Okay? So, let's see. How are you getting on with your art project, Tom? Okay. Like, they gave us the theme of birds to base our project on, and I'm not really all that interested in wildlife, but I'm starting to get into it. I've pretty well finished the introductory stage. So have I. When they gave us all those handouts with details of books and websites to look at, I was really put off. But the more I read, the more interested I got. Mm, me too. I found I could research so many different aspects of birds in art. The colour, movement, texture. So I was looking forward to the bird park visit. What a letdown. It poured with rain and we hardly saw a single bird. Much less used than the trip to the Natural History Museum. Yeah. I liked all the stuff about evolution there. The workshop sessions with Dr Fletcher were good too, especially the brainstorming sessions. Ah, oh, I missed those because I was ill. I wish we could have seen the projects last year's students did. Hmm, I suppose they want us to do our own thing, not copy. OK, now this time you will tell me two options which are the right ones. And if you get one right answer, one wrong answer, you will get one mark for that. So, correct answer is option C and option E. Good. Now, if out of C, E, you have chosen one right option and one wrong option, you will get one mark, okay? Now, let's listen to it again. How are you getting on with your art project, Tom? Okay. Like, they gave us the theme of birds to base our project on, and I'm not really all that interested in wildlife. But I'm starting to get into it. I've pretty well finished the introductory stage. So have I. When they gave us all those handouts with details of books and websites to look at, I was really put off. But the more I read, the more interested I got. Mm, me too. Handouts. The more I read, the more interested I got. And he said, me too. What does it mean? Agree. Right? So, handouts... And they agree. More I read, more I got. So E is the first right answer. I found I could research so many different aspects of birds in art. The colour, movement, texture. So I was looking forward to the bird park visit. What a letdown. It poured with rain and we hardly saw a single bird. Bird park visit? It poured with rain and we saw hardly a single bird. Right? So, bird park visit was useless because of rain. They were unable to see any bird. Much less used than the trip to the Natural History Museum. Much less useful than the trip to the Natural History Museum. What does it mean? The trip to the Natural History Museum was useful. Right? If I say it's much less useful than that. So, it means the other one, other thing is more useful. Right? Natural History Museum is the second correct answer. Now? Yeah. I liked all the stuff about evolution there. The workshop sessions with Dr Fletcher were good too, especially the brainstorming sessions. Oh, I missed those because I was ill. Workshop sessions. I missed those because I was ill. So, workshop sessions are gone. I wish we could have seen the projects last year's students did. Hmm, I suppose they want us to do our own thing, not uh, copy. I wish we could see the projects last year's students did and he said, he said they want us to do our own work. So projects done in previous year, they don't agree. Okay, C and D are the right answers. Now, let's go on. Questions 23 and 24. Which two ways? Underline two ways. Do both Jess and Tom decide, underline decide, to change their proposal? So subject is changing their proposal. Two ways they will change their proposal. Now look here, five options. Out of five options, two things they will change. Three things, either they will not change, right? Or, or like they will talk about changing their proposal in two things. Option A, giving a rationale for their action plans. Rational is the logical thinking to their action plans. Underline rational and action plan. Less specific about the outcome. Less specific about the outcome. Outcome is the research outcome. 
so they will be less specific more specific means you see the outcome of the re research is this but we say well the outcome can be different it can be in different ways so less specific about the outcome adding a video diary so underline video diary if they are going to add a video diary providing a timeline what is timeline in 1980 this thing happened in 1985 another development in 1990 this thing we call it timeline and mind map and option e by making their more uh, notes more evaluative so making notes more evaluated now where they are going to change that will be the right answer where they will not make any change that will be the wrong answer so let's see have you drafted your proposal yet yes but i haven't handed it in i need to amend some parts I've realized the notes from my research are almost all just descriptions. I haven't actually evaluated anything, so I'll have to fix that. Oh, I didn't know we had to do that. I'll have to look at that too. Did you do a timeline for the project? Yes, and a mind map. Yeah, so did I. I quite enjoyed that, but it was hard having to explain the basis for my decisions in my action plan. What? You know, give a rationale. I didn't realize we had to do that. Okay, I can add it now. And I've done the video diary presentation and worked out what I want my outcome to be in the project. Someone told me it's best not to be too precise about your actual outcome at this stage, so you have more scope to explore your ideas later on. So I'm going to go back to my proposal to make it a bit more vague. Really? Okay, I'll change that too then. All right, I'll change that too then. Okay? So correct answer is option E. First they talked about their notes more evaluative and the second correct answer is option B. And you can write your answer on the answer sheet in any order, okay? I'm playing it again and I'll tell you why these two answers are right. Have you drafted your proposal yet? Yes, but I haven't handed it in. I need to amend some parts. I've realized the notes from my research are almost all just descriptions. I haven't actually evaluated anything, so I'll have to fix that. Okay, my notes are just description. I haven't evaluated anything, so I'm going to fix that. Now, she says what? Oh, I didn't know we had to do that. Oh, I didn't realize we have to do that. I'll have to look at that too. I'll have to look at that too. So making their notes more evaluative. At the moment they are descriptive. So this is the first change they are going to do. I have to look at that too. Did you do a timeline for the project? Yes, and a mind map. Okay, did you do a timeline? Yes, and a mind map. Now they are not changing it. Yeah, so did I. So did I. Are they changing anything about it? No, okay? I quite enjoyed that, but it was hard having to explain the basis for my decisions in my action plan. What? You know, give a rationale. I didn't realize we had to do that. Okay, I didn't realize we had to do that. Now they're talking about giving a rationale for their action plans. Now listen, he didn't do it. Change means you do something and you change it. And when you don't do anything, it you are not changing. You are actually starting it. So option A is wrong because he didn't do it. Okay, I can add it now. I can add it now. Means they're not changing it. He has not done something, he's doing it. And by the way, they both are not doing it. One has already done it, one hasn't done it. And I've done the video diary presentation and worked out what I want my outcome to be in the project. Someone told me it's... Okay, I've done video diary presentation, but they're not changing it because the question is... Decide to change, okay? Best not to be too precise about your actual outcome. At yeah, not be precise about your actual outcome. What is that? Not precise means less specific about the outcome. That is option B. This stage, so you have more scope to explore your ideas later on. So I'm going to go back to my proposal to make it a bit more vague. Really? Okay, I'll change that too then. I'm going to go to my proposal to make it more vague. He said, okay, I'm going to do that too. I'm going to do that too means they decide to do it. I'm going to do that. So B and E, right answers. And you can write these answers in any order, but I would advise you first write B 
23b and 24e. Th this way it will be right, okay? All right, now let's move on the real party, part three, multiple choice questions. This test is full of multiple choice questions. Like uh, one of my students, he complained in his actual exam, IELTS listening, they were around 25, 28 multiple choice questions. And this may happen. Part one, even if you're unlucky in part four, multiple choice questions. So don't be afraid. Try to learn to deal with them. Okay. Now, work experience for veterinary science students. Veterinary science means animal doctors. So, work experience for animal doctors. In this audio, they will talk about that. Uh, and in part three, by the way, there may be minimum two and maximum three speakers. Like part three is there is a dialogue and sometimes there is a trialogue where there is a tutor and two students they are discussing. But sometimes mainly two students. So, Question number 21. Please come to question number 21. What problem? Underline the word problem. Did both Diana and Tim, underline both, have problem both have when arranging their work experience? Work experience is more like, uh, what do we call it when you are working in a bank as a trainee? I mean, they don't give you the salary. But you just go there as a well, internship. Yeah, internship, exactly. So what problem did both have when they were arranging their internship? Internship means their work experience. Now listen, a, a problem of Diana only is not the right answer. Problem of Tim only is not the right answer. Their shared problem will be the right answer. So there are three options. One will be the problem of Tim only. And Diana says, I didn't have to face this problem. Second problem will be Diana's problem and Tim will say, I was lucky. I didn't have to face that problem. And one problem, one person will say and second will say, me too. It was hard for me as well. That will be the right answer. Okay. Now, what are the problems? Option A, making initial contact with suitable farms. Underline making initial contact. Okay. Making the contact with the farm. That, sir, I am a, I'm an animal doctor. And I want to get some work experience in your farm. So making initial experience was a problem. If it was a problem of, for example, Diana says, well, it was very difficult for me to contact with a suitable firm. And Tim says, I didn't have any problem. My father's friend had his own farmhouse. So he invited me there. So it means A is not the right answer. B, organizing transport to and from the farm. Underline organizing transport. If one says it was very difficult for me to reach there, the train took two hours. And second one says, I didn't have this problem. I stayed on the farm. I stayed on the farm means he didn't have to face transport problem. And if he says, yes, me too, the road was very bumpy and it took me three hours to reach there, then it is the right answer. Option C, finding a placement for the required length of time, underline required length of time. Now, for example, if I need internship for three months and they say, well, we only have availability for one month. So finding a placement for required length of time. Now, what was their shared problem? Again, I'm telling you a problem with that. Both agree. And other one also says me too. I had the same issue. That will be the right answer. Now, let's see. And by the way, you're dealing with elephant of files listening. 
part three is what I call elephant. You will hear two veterinary science students called Diana and Tim discussing their work placements and their course modules. So, Tim, we have to do a short summary of our work experience on a farm. Right. My farm was great, but arranging the work experience was hard. One problem was it was miles away and I don't drive. And also, I'd really wanted a placement for a month, but I could only get one for two weeks. Mm, I was lucky. The farmer let me stay on the farm, so I didn't have to travel. But finding the right sort of farm to apply to wasn't easy. No, they don't seem to have websites, do they? I found mine through a friend of my mother's, but it wasn't easy. No. Finding the right farm to apply to wasn't easy. What is that? Option A, not C. C is finding a placement for the required length of time. He said I need it for one month, but they gave me for two weeks. But that was not the problem of the lady. I will repeat it. Don't worry. So correct answer. What here did you think about diet and nutrition? Is A. I play it again. You will hear two vet. Now we will focus the wrong options mainly. Science students called Diana and Tim discussing their work placements and their course modules. So Tim, we have to do a short summary of our work experience on a farm. Right. My farm was great, but arranging the work experience was hard. One problem was it was miles away and I don't drive. It was miles away, but I don't drive. Option B. And also, I'd really wanted a placement for a month, but I could only get one for two weeks. I wanted a placement for a month. Option C. But I could only get for two weeks. Now. Mm, I was lucky. The farmer let me stay on the farm, so I didn't have to travel. I was lucky. Farmer let me stay at the farm. I didn't have to travel. Option B gone. Because it is not their shared problem. Stay on the farm, so I didn't have to travel. But finding the right sort... Okay, now option C. Length of time. It was only the problem of Tim. That lady didn't say anything about that. Only Tim said that. Now they come to option A. Lucky. The farmer let me stay on the farm, so I didn't have to travel. But finding the right sort of farm to apply to wasn't easy. Finding the right sort of farm to apply to wasn't easy means making initial contact with suitable farm. Now she says it was not easy. Now let's see what does he say. So I didn't have to travel. But finding the right sort of farm to apply to wasn't easy. No, they don't seem to have websites, do they? I found mine through a friend of my mother's, but it wasn't easy. No. It wasn't easy, no. So both of them, they had problem with making initial contact with suitable farm. Now, question number 22. Tim was pleased to be able to help. Now, question is about Tim only. So you will listen to Tim carefully. This time it's only Tim and you're going to listen to him carefully. Uh, okay, he was pleased means he was happy to help. Now listen carefully. Where Tim actively helped out of three options, Tim actively helped. That will be the right answer. Where farmer did things on his own or where a doctor came and he managed all these things. Those will be the wrong options. Option A. A lamb that had broken leg. Underline lamb and broken leg. Now, if Tim helped a lamb with broken leg and he is happy about it, that's the right answer. But if we say, once there was a lamb with a broken leg and then the farmer called the doctor. So, did Tim do anything? No, it's not the right answer. Option B. Sheep that was having difficulty giving birth. So, underline sheep difficulty giving birth. Now, if Tim helped a sheep who was having difficulty giving birth, it's a right answer. But if he says, a doctor came in and I saw and he guided me, it means he didn't do anything, right? Then it is not. A, I mean, where Tim act actually helped or actively helped, that will be the right answer. C, newly born lamb, underline newly born lamb. And then underline having trouble feeding. So if Tim helped a newly born lamb, which was having trouble feeding, then C will be the right answer. Now, let's see. 
again keep the question in mind tim was pleased to be able to help yes my farm had sheep too yes my f- my farm was mostly livestock especially sheep i really enjoyed helping out with them i was up most of one night helping a sheep deliver a lamb on your own no the farmer was there and he told me what to do it wasn't a straightforward birth but i managed it was a great feeling to see the lamb stagger to its feet and start feeding almost straight away and to know that it was okay mm. then another time a lamb had broken its leg and they got the vet in to set it and he talked me through what he was doing that was really useful okay now you got to see where tim was active and he actively did that all right correct answer is option b okay a broken leg a doctor came in they used the word vet the farmer called a vet and newly born lamb that was having trouble feeding no the lamb did it all on its own he didn't find help from tim please listen again my farm was mostly livestock especially sheep i really enjoyed helping out with them i was up most of one night helping a sheep deliver a lamb i was up one night helping a sheep deliver a lamb on your own no the farmer was there and he told me what to do on your own no the farmer was there and he told me what to do so all the things were done by him it wasn't a straightforward birth but i managed it was a great feeling to see the lamb st- okay it was a great feeling and now it was a great feeling to see the lamb go to its feet and start feeding almost straight away and start feeding almost straight away now he didn't help the lamb did it all itself started feeding okay and to know that it was okay mm. then another time a lamb had broken its leg and they got the vet in to set it okay the lamb broken its leg and they got the vet in to set it so he didn't do anything vet did that okay all right don't worry through practice you will be able to i mean for this you need to upgrade your english then it's going to be fine otherwise part 3 becomes pashto for students they don't understand okay all right Now, those who understand pashto they will say oh i love pashto question number 23 diana says sheep on her farm now you will listen to diana carefully and the subject is sheep on her farm she will talk about sheep on her farm option a various different varieties underline various varieties now listen if she says the sheep on my, my farm they were only one variety or one breed or single breed then a is not the right answer because a is various varieties various varieties means many breeds or different breeds option b mainly reared for their meat underline reared for meat the purpose of raising the sheep was their meat and if the purpose was their milk or the purpose was their wool then it is not the right answer okay option c better quality wool than sheep on the hills underline better quality wool now listen to diana whatever she says about the sheep on her farm and two options will be discussed negatively one option is the right one Yes, my farm had sheep too. The farm was in a valley and they had a lowland breed called Suffolk. Although the farmer said they'd had other breeds in the past. So were they bred for their meat? Mostly, yes. They're quite big and solid. My farm was up in the hills and they had a different breed of sheep. They were Cheviots. Oh, I heard their wool's really sought after. Yes, it's very hard wearing. and they use it for carpets right see that i told you you will listen to diana carefully okay so correct answer is actually a b c b is the right answer and i tell you why i'll prove it i'll i'll play the audio again okay don't worry yes my farm had sheep too my farm had sheep too The farm was in a valley and they had a lowland breed called Suffolk. They had a lowland breed called Suffolk. Option A. Various different varieties? No. A 
lowland breed called suffix so how many varieties just one a is not the right answer although the farmer said they'd had other breeds in the the farmer said they had other breeds in the past right but question is about present past so were they bred for their meat mostly yeah were they bred for their meat mostly yes option b were mainly reared for reared they use the word bred were they bred breed bred bred were they bred for their meat and he said mostly so mostly is mainly reared for their meat b is the right answer and now listen on and s they're quite big and solid my farm was up in the hills my farm was up in the hills but we are not interested because question is about diana so whatever he says about his farm that is not the answer he's talking about option c but as the question is about option uh, about diana so we'll not listen to him okay let's go on we've got more multiple choice questions question number 24 what did the students learn about adding supplements to chicken feed now this time clue word is supplements you know they give special feed to poultry right so supplements to chicken feed what did they learn these now you need to find this link these means supplements so option a supplements should only be given if specifically needed underline given if needed given if needed so they say uh, they should be given when they require it so supplements should be given when the chicken requires it then it is option a b it is worth paying extra for the most effective ones underline worth paying extra most effective ones and what do they mean by ones supplements you should know that if you don't know it you will not find the answer if if he says in the audio well uh, the expensive supplements are better than the cheaper ones <clears throat> that is option b worth paying extra for the most effective ones if in the audio he says whether you buy an expensive one or cheaper one they are all the same if he says they are all the same it means it's not worth paying extra for expensive ones option c amount given at one time should be limited so amount limited means they should given a, they should give a limited amount of supplements exactly now let's see what do they say I was interested in the amount of supplements they add to animals feed nowadays like even the chickens got extra vitamins and electrolytes in their feed Yes I found that too and they're not cheap but my farmer said some are overpriced for what they are and he didn't give them as a matter of routine just at times when the chickens seem to particularly require them Yes my said the same He said certain breeds of chickens might need more supplements than the others, but the cheap and expensive ones are all basically the same. Mm. Cheap and expensive ones are all basically the same. So option B, worth paying extra, wrong. Okay, and when the chicken requires them, that's what they mentioned. So correct answer is option A. Well done. Please listen to it again. I was interested in the amount of supplements they add to animals feed nowadays. Like even the chickens got extra vitamins and electrolytes in their feed. Yes, I found that too. And they're not cheap. But my farmer said some are overpriced for what they are, and he didn't give them as a matter of routine, just at times when the chickens seem to particularly require them. He didn't give them as a matter of routine just the time when the chicken seem to require them so that is option a these should be given if specifically or specially needed okay question number 25 what happened when diana was working with dairy cows so dairy cows and what happened yeah diana did something yeah cow ne tud mariya yeah something like that okay what happened when diana was working with dairy cows option a she accidentally uh, she identified some cows incorrectly so identified cows incorrectly and by the way we know the subject is cows so identified incorrectly like this cow is from this breed that is australian cow that is irish cow and all that option b 
accidentally threw milk away. So accidentally threw milk. Like Thudda Marke, like the bucket of milk she threw accidentally. And option C, made a mistake when storing milk. So mistake when storing milk. Now three options. Option A, she identified cows incorrectly. Means the breed of cows. Option B, accidentally threw milk. Like the milk was there in the container and accidentally she fell on the milk or she threw the milk, something like that. And option C, she made a mistake when storing milk. Like that was the milk of Australian cows and that was the sick cows and she mixed the milk of sick cows with the other ones or something like that, okay? Let's see what happens. So did your farm have any other livestock, Diana? Yes, dairy cows. Oh, I made a really embarrassing mistake when I was working in the milk shed. Some cows had been treated with antibiotics, so their milk wasn't suitable for human consumption and it had to be put in a separate container. But I got mixed up and I poured some milk from the wrong cow in with the milk for humans. So the whole lot had to be thrown away. The farmer wasn't too happy with me. Okay, I got mixed up and I put the milk which was not suitable for human and all that. Which option is that? C. She made a mistake when storing milk. And by the way, B is not the right answer. Because then the whole milk should have been threw away, thrown away and all that. Please focus. So did your farm have any other livestock, Diana? Yes, dairy cows. Oh, I made a really embarrassing mistake when I was working in the milk shed. Some cows had been treated with antibiotics so their milk wasn't suitable for human consumption and it had to be put in a separate container. But I got mixed up and I poured some milk from the wrong cow in with the milk for humans. So the whole lot had to be thrown away. Okay, I got mixed up and the whole lot had to be thrown away. Okay, question number 26. What did both farmers mention about wet sand farming? Again, both farmers... Farmer of Diana and farmer of Tim. So what did both farmers, underline both farmers, mention and wet sand farming. Wet is doctors, animal doctors and farmhouses. Vets are failing to cope with some aspects of animal health. Just underline vets are failing. Animal doctors don't know. Vets don't know. They are failing. They are not successful. Option B. There needs to be fundamental change in the training of vets. Underline fundamental change, training of vets. And option C, some jobs could be done by farmer rather than a vet. So some jobs done by farmer rather than vet. Means they don't need to call the doctor. They can do it on their own, right? Now both farmers. One farmer will talk about one thing. They don't agree, but where they agree, that will be the right answer. I asked my farmer how much he depended on the vet to deal with health problems. I'd read reports that the livestock's health is being affected as farmers are under pressure to increase production. Well, he didn't agree with that. But he said that actually some of the stuff the vets do, like minor operations, he'd be quite capable of doing himself. Yeah, my farmer said the same. But he reckons vet skills are still needed. Okay, my farmer said the same. Like minor operations, we could do that. So, some jobs could be done by the farmer rather than by a vet. And she said, my farmer said the same. So, option C will be the right answer. Okay, that's good so far. 